Well, a blessed Monday in May, dear saints. Today, the 3rd of May, as we begin this new month again with God's word and his promises to us. The psalm for today, Psalm 31, and the Old Testament reading from Leviticus 21. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll hear the word of the Lord from the psalmist this morning. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me, incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net that they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Right at the beginning we see the theme that carries over into this Leviticus text. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. And we'll see that as we talk about the holiness of the priests and in our time today, the the, uh, requirements for a pastor and why that is important as we work in God's house and we bring his gifts to the people. From Leviticus chapter 21, And the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, No one shall make himself unclean for the dead among his people except for his closest relative, his mother, his father, his son, his daughter, his brother, or his virgin sister who is near to him because she has no husband. For for her he may make himself unclean. He shall not make himself unclean as a husband among his people and so profane himself. They shall not make bald patches on their heads, nor shave off the edges of their beard, nor make any cuts in their body. They shall be holy to their God, and not profane the name of their God. For they offer the Lord's food offerings, the bread of their God, therefore they shall be holy. They shall not marry a prostitute or a woman who has been defiled, neither shall they marry a woman divorced from her husband, for the priest is holy to his God." You shall sanctify him, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you, for I, the Lord, for I, the Lord who sanctify you, am holy. And the daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by whoring, profanes her father, she shall be burned with fire. The priest who is chief among his brothers, on whose head the anointing oil is poured, who has been consecrated to wear the garments, shall not let the hair of his head hang loose, nor tear his clothes. He shall not go into any dead bodies, nor make himself unclean, even for his father or his mother. He shall not go out of the sanctuary, lest he profane the sanctuary of his God, for the consecration of the anointing oil of his God is on him. I am the Lord. And he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman or a a woman who has been defiled or a prostitute, these he shall not marry. But he shall take as his wife a virgin of his own people, that that he might not profane his offspring among his people. For I am the Lord who sanctifies him. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, saying, None of your offspring throughout their generations who has a blemish may approach to offer the bread of his God. For no one who has a blemish shall draw near. A man blind or lame, or one who has a mutilated face, or a limb too long, or a man who has injured foot or an injured hand, or a hunchback, or a dwarf, or a man with a defect in his sight, or an itching disease, or scabs, or crushed testicles. No man of the offspring of Aaron, the priest, who had a blemish, shall come near to offer the Lord's food offerings, since he had a blemish. He shall not come near to offer the bread of God. He may eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy things, but he shall not go through the veil or approach the altar, because he has a blemish, 
that he may not profane my, sanctu my sanctuaries, for I am the Lord who profanes them. I am, excuse, him, excuse me, for I am the Lord who sanctifies them. So Moses spoke to Aaron and to his sons and to all the people of Israel. There's a lot of holiness there. There's a lot of things that when we talk about this, the holiness of the priests, these people were specially selected. And as they were specially selected, they weren't necessarily only selected because they were of Aaron's tribe. They were also having to be perfect. You heard the defects. They couldn't be a dwarf or they couldn't be one who had a limb too long or, an, or a, a birth defect or an itching defect or something like that. They had to be perfect, at least as perfect as the body could be. They represented God giving his gifts to his people. Just as the Holy of Holies was a place where God set some very specific directions so that Aaron wouldn't go in at the wrong time and die like Nadab and Abihu, so also God sets up these provisions for the office of the holy ministry, if you will. As the priests here continue to serve God's people, the priests are holy. Now today, or excuse me, in the Old Testament, this is pointing ahead to something else. This is pointing ahead to the one priest who will come, the one priest who will be perfect in body and in soul, the one priest who will come without any sin at all, who will die on the cross, who will rise again, who will give his body to us to eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins. All of this holiness right here points to what God is doing as he brings our Savior into the world. He is the holy high priest in the order of Melchizedek. He is the high priest that fulfills what Adam couldn't do, is the perfect high priest, and also the sacrifice giving himself to us that we also might be holy. All of these things that we see here, they all deal with God dealing with us through the fourth commandment, through authority. God has given us husbands and wives to continue to catechize our kids, and in this position right here, he has given us the authority of priest or pastor, as we would say today, to continue giving us God's gifts, being his representative to us here in our world. Not being God, not being Christ, not forgiving sins of his own authority, but being the one by the authority of the office he's put in, that gives forgiveness of sins, pronounces forgiveness of sins to us. If we jump ahead into the New Testament, Paul writing to the young pastor Timothy in 2 Timothy gives some very clear direction to who should be a pastor. The husband of one wife, not given to drink, not given to, to loose lips, to gossip, you know, all of these things. Sober-minded, dedicated, all of these requirements. Why is that? Why does God continue to put those requirements there? Because the pastoral office is the office of the representative, or the pastor is the representative of Christ. And the pastoral office is a holy office. Not that the pastor makes it holy, but that God makes it holy. And when people see the pastoral office, they should be deflected to seeing Christ working in our world. The office is not for everyone. It's not for women. It's not for men who don't fit into these qualifications. The office is a very special office so that those who are in that office might do a good job of reflecting people back to the hope and promise that we have in Christ. If a pastor falls or fails in a public way and can't be a pastor anymore, he has done that and he has put himself, his sin has put himself in a position that he can no longer fulfill the office of pastor. But that does not mean that the work that he did is negated as well. If a pastor divorces his wife, it does not mean that every marriage that he ever officiated at is null and void. It only means that he failed. The pronouncement that he gave to that couple when they were married is still valid. The baptisms that he performed are still valid because it is by the water and the word of God that they're saved. The forgiveness of sins that he pronounced to the congregation or to individuals is still forgiven because the office 
the work that the man does in the office is dependent on Christ and his gifts given, not the man who delivered them. It's a great chapter when we look at the holiness of the priest because it reminds us how precious this gift of the holy ministry is that God has given to us. Dear saints, this week I would invite you to pray and to encourage young men to be pastors and young women to be church workers and and other young men to be church workers in different areas as well. Because it is through these gifts, especially the office of the pastoral ministry, where God delivers his gifts to us. Forgiveness, life, salvation all given to us by water and word, by bread and wine, given and shed for you for your forgiveness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our catechetical review for today brings us to the third section on the sacrament of the altar. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words along with the bodily eating and drinking are the main things in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this day for the gifts of you have given to your church. Priests in the Old Testament that point us to our great high priest in Christ and pastors in the New Testament that deliver to us your good gifts. We pray, Father, for an increase in the holy ministry. That as you have given many people to hear the word, that you would give us also pastors to preach that word and to give us your gifts. Father, strengthen our seminaries and those who teach that our pastors might, be, might come out equipped and well prepared to preach and to teach and to let us hear the good news of our Savior Jesus Christ. Father, hear us as we pray in Jesus' name the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, the announcement that I forgot to make at the beginning is this, that this week is my week to record devotions for Fellowship for the Future. That's our Black Hill Circuit Facebook page, and there are daily devotions on there every day, uh, Monday through Saturday. And this week is my week not only to record for Divine Shepherd, but also to record for our circuit. So if you'd like to check out that page, You'll see me there this week, Fellowship for the Future, in the Black Hill Circuit. You'll find that on Facebook. And then every week, you'll find a different pastor from the Black Hill Circuit giving us God's word for the day. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.